And then the dinosaur escapes. Oh boy, Snoozer, how do we escape? Well, Checkers, I turn into a superhero. Back Snoozer. Back Snoozer can fly using his rocket boosters. Then the dinosaur hits Back Snoozer with his tail, and everyone thinks it's going to eat Back Snoozer. But then, Back Snoozer uses his super powerful trunk to blast the dinosaur into the sky and all the way to Mars. Really? Yes! Back Snoozer saves everyone in the whole world! What does Checkers do? Um, Checkers is very happy. Lovely, Snoozer. Yeah! Hey, Checkers! Where did the baby dinosaurs come from? Like, how is it born? Yeah! Did they come in the mail, or did they magically appear? Well, as far as scientists know, Snoozer, dinosaurs hatched out of eggs. Just like how modern-day birds are born. In fact, Hmm. Well, we could probably go outside and see dinosaur eggs all around us. In fact, you could probably see a dinosaur egg in a tree near our house. But I get the feeling you want to see, like, a big dinosaur egg. Yeah, I want to see a big dinosaur egg. Well, that is a great idea, Snoozer, and that is going to be what we're discovering on today's Reading Road Trip. Check, check. All right, snoozer. Ascending in three, two, one. And we're off. Autopilot activated. So where are we going today? All right, snoozer. Time for your three hints. Hint number one. It's indoor. Hint number two. It's full of science information. And hint number three. We were there before to learn about dinosaurs. Oh, the science museum? You got it. Great job, Snoozer. We are headed to the science museum to see the dinosaur egg that we talked about. Let's pull up the map. We are headed for Rainbow Way. Once we cross through, we'll be right at our destination, the Buffalo Museum of Science. Along the way, we are going to check in with Mrs. Hamilton and create a dinosaur craft. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! Hey! Here come the books, snoozer! Let's check out a few. Here you go, Snoozer. A Dinosaur Named Sue, The Story of a Colossal Fossil by Pat Ralph. And How to Take Care of Your Dinosaur by Jason Cockcroft. Wow, A Dinosaur Named Sue. Now that is a nonfiction story. That is a story about something that really happened. Let's talk about that one first. This is a true story about a dinosaur named Sue, a Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton that was discovered in 1990 and it was the most complete Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton ever found. Because dinosaurs have been buried for millions and millions of years, we don't usually find complete skeletons. They'll usually find fragments and have to put them together. But in 1990 in South Dakota, a woman named Susan Hendrickson made the discovery of a lifetime. After working all summer with a group of fossil hunters, she discovered ancient animal bones buried inside a cliff. The more she looked around, she found more fragments of the bone. By discovering the bones were hollow, Susan realized that these must be the bones of a meat-eating dinosaur, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. But Snoozer, that is just the start of this great story. It is packed with amazing real-life information about dinosaurs. 
The book dives deeper into Susan's amazing discovery and how impactful it really was. We learn about the different eras of dinosaurs, when they lived, when they were extinct, and the first time scientists discovered dinosaur bones. This is a book for older readers to read by themselves, but younger readers can definitely listen along and look at all the pictures. The pictures help tell the story and show the dinosaurs being put together, show the different eras of dinosaurs, and where they lived on planet Earth. If you're somebody who wants to learn more about dinosaurs, Snoozer, this is the exact type of book to read. Because it doesn't just tell us about dinosaurs, it also teaches us about how humans discovered them millions and millions of years later. Yay! I'm gonna read that book today, after our trip! Hey Checkers, can I make my dinosaur now? Yes, Snoozer, I think this would be a great time for you to make a Tyrannosaurus Rex craft with your teacher, Mrs. Hamilton. How does that sound? Great! Alright, let's bring on Mrs. Hamilton right now and make your Tyrannosaurus Rex craft. Hi, Snoozer! Are you all set to make your T-Rex? Yippers! Ah, oh, that's great. All right, well, you need these two sheets. There's two of them. And some scissors and a glue. Glue stick will do ya. All right, let's get started. to do some little pieces huh wow it's hard to cut out those three toes just like a t-rex really has all right so now i'm gonna get my stuff situated Well, here's my T-Rex. How does yours look? Here's what I did. Ah, I love it. All right, well, I'll see you next time. Bye. If you would like to email Checkers and Snoozers, send your emails to checkers at checkerslibrarytv.com. We always look forward to hearing from you. Snoozer, that is one spooky looking Tyrannosaurus Rex. I love how you gave it big crunching teeth. Thanks! I think he's cute! I wish he was my pet. Hey Checkers, do you think dinosaurs could be pets if they were around today? <laughs> well Snoozer, dinosaurs have not existed for a long time of course. They existed during the Mesozoic era, 243 million years ago up to 66 million years ago. And we learned about them during our reading road trip all about dinosaurs. But if dinosaurs were around today, Snoozer, we would definitely not want to keep them as pets. Just like all wild animals, dinosaurs were wild, and we would have wanted to stay far, far away from them. But that doesn't mean we can't have some fun and use our imagination and imagine what it would be like if dinosaurs and humans did share the earth together. And that is what our second book is all about. How to Take Care of Your Dinosaur. This is a fun book for younger readers where you get to see a dinosaur as a pet. This story is quite funny because it's just make-believe and it's humorous to see a dinosaur being used as a pet. The dinosaur isn't identified as a specific species, but it's very large and would never make a very good pet. This book is all about how to take care of a dinosaur, including feeding it a lot of food, taking it for a walk, and giving it a bath. It kind of reminds me of Clifford a bit, because imagining a giant pet in public that large stomping around and causing all sorts of havoc by accident is really funny. So I think you'll really enjoy reading this snoozer. It has amazing illustrations, it's very cartoonish and funny, and it has a lot of imagination. Cool! I like how 
what hatches out of the big egg like that. Wait, checkers. If we we're going to see a dinosaur egg, doesn't that mean it could hatch and more dinosaurs could be born? No, Snoozer. There are no prehistoric eggs anymore. Scientists dug up dinosaurs by finding fragments of bones. These bones are millions of years old. Then they put them together over long periods of time. Kind of like solving a super complex puzzle. By doing this, they learned a lot about the creatures. That's how we know they came from eggs. But the eggs themselves are long gone, Snoozer. What? So we aren't going to see a dinosaur egg? Is it just a fake egg? No, no, the egg we're seeing today is completely real. But if there aren't any more dinosaurs around, how are we going to see a dinosaur egg? Especially a big one! Well, you'll see, Snoozer. Wait a minute, Snoozer! We're at the rainbow! Well, if we're gonna cross through Rainbow Way and head to the Science Museum, we are wearing our safety suits. Changing in three, two, one. Going through the rainbow. We're here at the Buffalo Museum of Science. Let's head inside. Here we are at Rethink Extinct. Over there is the T-Rex head skeleton mold. We saw that last time. Now let's head inside and see that dinosaur egg. Now this giant elephant bird egg had been in the museum's collection since 1939. And back then, they thought that this was just a replica of an elephant bird egg. But recently, they discovered that this egg is the real deal. That's right, this is a real elephant bird egg. But what is an elephant bird? Well, you can see it on the wall right over there. The elephant bird is a long extinct species of flightless bird that was unique to the island of Madagascar. At 11 feet tall and weighing over a thousand pounds, when this bird roamed the earth, it was the largest bird to be found. Scientists don't know how this bird went extinct exactly, but fossil records show this bird may have went extinct as early as the 12th century, almost a thousand years ago. And to see how big that was, they traced the elephant bird size out in blue. Look behind me. That's how big an elephant bird would look behind me. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? Wait there just a minute. I remember you said dinosaurs existed millions of years ago before I was even born. But you said the elephant bird went extinct only about a thousand years ago. I don't understand. The elephant bird wasn't a dinosaur. Snoozer, that is what this entire trip has been all about. Dinosaurs as we know them went extinct millions of years ago. But what you may not know is that dinosaurs evolved into birds. Every bird that roams the earth today is a descendant of dinosaurs, specifically the avian dinosaurs. And just like dinosaurs, birds hatch from eggs. Birds are modern day dinosaurs. Now the elephant bird may be extinct too, but it was part of that evolution. While being relatively small, birds didn't need as much food and could multiply quicker than other dinosaurs. And their ability to fly allowed them to travel easier than other dinosaurs. Unfortunately for the elephant bird, that wasn't possible. It was a flightless bird, just like a penguin, and it was really, really big. But the birds that did survive were able to hide easier, travel easier, and escape the rough conditions after an asteroid hit the Earth 66 million years ago and wiped out all the other dinosaurs. And now it's time for... The Joke of the Week. Why are librarians very good at planning vacations? They know how to book a trip. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a lot of fun, Snoozer. And now we have two great dinosaur books to read later. Yes, and now that I know birds are dinosaurs, I want to read more books about dinosaurs. Well, let's ask Zot for more selections. Hey, Zot, what other great dinosaur books do you have for us? 
Zot, the robot at your service. Today's selections are Harry and the Dinosaurs at the Museum by Ian Wybrow. How Do Dinosaurs Say Goodnight by Jane Yolen. The Field Mouse and the Dinosaur Named Sue by Jan Wall. Little Leo's Fascinating World of Paleontology by Jeff Bond. Dinosaur by Charlie Gardner. Books featuring dinosaurs. Goodbye. Thanks, Ot. Well, that is a great selection of more books for us to read, Snoozer. And pretty soon, we're going to be checking out more books and going to another amazing place on our upcoming very special reading road trip.